Welcome to Dreamy Tales, your bedtime haven. Prepare to embark on a journey of tranquility and relaxation. I'm here to weave enchanting stories that will gently guide you into a restful night's sleep. Subscribe and let the soothing whispers of Dreamy Tales be your nightly companion. The Magic Compass Chapter 1 Lost in the Forest The sun hung low in the sky as Acorn and Hazel scurried through the forest, chattering to each other as they went. It had been a fruitful afternoon of gathering nuts and finding the sweetest berries, and their pouches were full to bursting. Let's see who can climb to the tallest treetop before nightfall, challenged Acorn, always seeking new adventures. Hazel followed more cautiously behind her reckless brother. She knew that once darkness fell, navigating the treacherous forest floor could become treacherous even for sure-footed squirrels. The siblings raced from trunk to trunk, leaping nimbly from branch to branch as they scaled ever higher. Acorn reached the top of a great oak first, puffing out his chest in triumph. But his victory was short-lived, for when he peered down to boast of his achievement, Hazel was nowhere to be seen. Hazel, he called, suddenly anxious. His voice echoed through the empty trees, but received no reply. Dread gripped his small heart. How far had night advanced without him noticing? Acorn scrambled hastily back down through the drying leaves, calling for his sister all the while. As darkness descended rapidly, his frantic yells dissolved into frightened squeaks. Beneath the dense canopy, twilight disappeared completely. The shadows of tall trunks looked like grasping hands in the gloom. Whimpering, Acorn burrowed into a hollow knot in the oak's trunk for shelter. His nose twitched at every rustle and snap of deadfall, imagining predators closing in. Where was Hazel? And how would they ever find their way home alone in this sinister blackness? Just then, a faint cry reached his ears. Acorn, where are you? Relief poured through him at the sound of her voice. Hazel, I'm here, he answered in a trembling squeak. Her form emerged from the murk, hurrying to his hiding place with urgency in her whiskers. We must hurry. Night has the forest in its grip, said Hazel sternly, though her own nose was a quiver. Give me your paw, little brother, and do not let go. I will lead us home. But as they ventured out into the void beneath the trees, not even Hazel was certain which direction lay safety. All was shrouded in the deepening gloom of the boundless wood. Chapter 2 A Voice in the Night Hazel and Acorn held paws tightly as they crept through the inky forest. All was eerily still, without even moon or stars to light their way. Hazel listened hard for any clues to guide them, but heard only their own fearful breaths. Acorn whimpered, his tired legs trembling. Hazel nuzzled him comfortingly. Soon we will be home and safe in our dray with a full belly of nuts. For now, let's explore this darkness with our minds instead of our eyes. Tell me a story to pass the time, little brother. Acorn took a shaky breath. Oh, once there was a brave squirrel named Amelia. She lived in a grand oak just like ours. One day, as Amelia gathered seeds, the sky suddenly went dark. She knew a storm was coming. Amelia scrabbled to finish before the rains began. But then, as Acorn wove his tail, the siblings continued their lonesome march. Minutes blurred into what felt like hours in the oppressive gloom. The forest inhaled their story and exhaled only the sighing of branches above. Their scared voices seemed puny against the vast, listening night. Then, a strange glow ahead caught Hazel's eye. She froze, nose and whiskers 
quivering. It couldn't be, yet there, unmistakably, was the flickering warm light of a fire through the trees. And carried on the still air, a gentle voice singing an old woodland melody. Acorn, look, she whispered in disbelief. Letting go of her brother, Hazel crept warily toward the light. Parting the bushes, her eyes went wide at the curious sight before her. An old man made entirely of bark, vines and broad fungi sat tucked within the hollow of a great spreading oak. Moss draped him like a cloak as he whittled shapes into the gnarled wood, lips moving soundlessly to his song. Above his carvings, the fire danced merrily, a beacon in the endless night. Chapter 3 Moss the Storyteller The siblings stared in awe at the wooden man, too shocked for fear. At length, he seemed to notice their tiny faces peering through the undergrowth. Come closer, little ones. Do not be shy, he said gently, voice as weathered as his ancient form. The forest is no friend to those lost in the dark. My fire has room for two more this night. Hesitantly, Hazel and Acorn emerged from the brush. Moss smiled down at them, creaking softly, and patted the mossy ground beside him. Still trembling, the siblings sat looking up at their strange host. Welcome, children of the wood. I am called Moss, he said. By the dancing flames, your eyes tell a harrowing tale. But in the light and warmth of friendship, all shadows fade. At his kind words, Acorn found the courage to ask, Please, sir, what manner of creature are you? Moss chuckled, the sound like falling leaves. A creature as old as these trees, little master squirrel. I came to this grove long ago and made it my home, as the moss and vines have made me their own. He held out a gnarled hand, in which tiny roses bloomed from knots and whirls. The siblings gasped softly, enchanted. To soothe frightened travelers, I like to spin yarns by the fire. Would you care to hear one? Moss asked. At their eager nods, he began. Once, in a time forgotten by songbirds and saplings alike, there lived a lonely dryad deep in the heart of the wood. Moss wove his story like the winding vines that clothed him carrying the children on wings of wonder away from the darkness without. When at last it was done, and the ashes glowed low, they realized dawn was nearing. But for now, in the shelter of the great oak and friendship's glow, the night held no further terrors. As the silvery light of pre-dawn filtered through rustling leaves, Acorn and Hazel said their grateful farewells. A new lightness filled their hearts, and guided by the golden song of birds at morning, the brother and sister ventured safely home. The old magical wood rang with their joyous chattering long into the sunny new day. Chapter 4 A Magic Wish The morning sun found Acorn and Hazel cozily tucked into their leafy dray, full of moss's stories and sweet autumn plums. Acorn snored lightly as Hazel gazed out at the blue sky, thoughts drifting to their friend in the forest. She was surprised to realize she no longer felt fear at the wood's mysteries. Moss's tales had woven an enchantment over the deep boughs and winding trails, reminding her that darkness need not be dread. As the pale sun climbed higher, Hazel's ears pricked at movement below. Peering out, she spied none other than Moss looping toward their home, his mossy smile kindling her joy. Good morrow, little Hazel, Acorn stirred drowsily. Is it time for another yarn? But Hazel had a question of her own. She scampered down to meet Moss, cheeks warming. Sir Moss, you have filled our night with wonder. Is there a gift to thank you properly? 
Moss chuckled gently. Your smiles are gift enough, dear ones, but I sense lingering shades in your bright eyes still. He bent near, breath like the forest floor. What gift would banish fear for good, child of oak and leaf? Hazel's small paw tightened on bark. Only to never lose myself in woodland ways, nor little brother. To always find home's light, however deep the glade. As morning chorus swelled its song, a fine green glow swirled around Hazel, sinking into bark and bone. Moss smiled wide. Your gift is granted, brave squirrel. Now and forever, home's path will be plain to see. With a last fond farewell, Moss took his leave beneath bowing boughs. Acorn tumbled to Hazel's side, full of questions, but she sensed something new within, a sure and steady compass, pointing always to shelter and kin. From that day, though hazes still veiled the forest, Hazel of oak and leaf would always find her way. Chapter 5 Finders of Home Summer waned swiftly as Acorn and Hazel played in branches warmed by the setting sun. Soon the woods would dress in red and gold, but for now, green still held sway. Acorn chattered endlessly of their latest adventures, but Hazel found herself listening more to rustlings beyond sight. Sounds only she could hear, it seemed like whispers pulling her gently home. Moss's gift had truly woven its magic. As darkness fell in a curtain of deep purple, Hazel's inner compass stirred, pointing firmly back the way they came. Time to set our paws toward home and hearth, little brother, she said, and Acorn followed without question or complaint. Though boughs loomed thicker than before, Hazel trod surely through the gloaming. With each stride, familiar scents and silhouettes emerged like old friends from the mist. Her brother's paw clung tight to her tail, safe in her sure guidance. Soon, the creaking giants of their tree rose into view, crowned by a mantle of stars. They scurried up familiar branches and into their cozy dray with sighs of content. As night wrapped the woods in slumber's shawl, Hazel gazed out at the darkness that no longer frightened. Somewhere deep within its verdant folds, an old friend kept watch beneath bowing boughs. Her wish had borne magic beyond dreams, a gift to find comfort wherever the forest paths led. And so, each sunset, under Moss's blessing, brother and sister would nestle into leaves with full stomachs and easier hearts, because wherever the forest wandered or wonder might roam, its children would always find the way safely back home. As the stars twinkle above, it's time for dreamy tales to bid you good night. May the soothing echoes of our stories linger in your dreams, offering you a serene escape. Until we meet again under the moonlit sky, sleep tight and sweet dreams.